Thank you so much uh, for coming out uh, today. Um, today is uh, an incredible day for me, uh, but it is a little bittersweet. I um, announced that I will be retiring on August 31st of this year. Uh, I've served in public service for 40 years, 37 years here at the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office, and what really scared me this morning is when my assistant told me that you've been here longer than I am old. Uh, and with that, you know, over the years, our team year, our team here, has had incredible successes. Um, I believe that I have been a credible leader of this organization, and that we've made a difference. Uh, we have accomplished the lowest crime rate here uh, last year. Since 1974, through the first six months of this year, almost a 10% reduction in crime. We have a state-of-the-art crime lab uh, with DNA and forensic and digital forensics. We've instituted intelligence-led policing, utilizing data analytical tools that have led us to have the highest arrest rates in so many different categories in the country. We have three new district stations and one underway. Uh, we have promotional testing that we use for promotions and transfers here that is cutting edge in the way that we evaluate the talent that we have within this organization. We're the largest license plate recognition system in the country in Jefferson Parish, which has been an incredible tool of fighting crime. We've been involved in cops and clergy, law enforcement chaplaincy, Band of Excellence for Kids. But the most important thing is that we've been the leader and the stalwart in leadership training and a commitment to excellence. And that intelligence is what is necessary uh, in order to provide good, clean, aggressive law enforcement with, a high, with empathy, sympathy, and a high level of intellect has been the mantra of this organization. I have been blessed in so many ways uh, with an incredible supportive family, my wife, Sean, and my kids, Sarah Taylor, uh, and, and others in my family that have been there to support me. I'm joined by a number of friends here today, my staff, the men and women of the JPSL, who are second to none, who come to work every day with a bounce in their step, knowing that they can make a difference. As, as we fight crime here in this parish, and most importantly to the citizens. I've been elected three times with an average vote over 90 percent. Um, that in and of itself is incredible in the trust that they have given uh, to me. I've also shared incredible partnerships with those in federal law enforcement, state law enforcement, and local law enforcement. And most importantly, and in particular, the chiefs of the municipalities within Jefferson Parish. We have shared a great common bond and a commitment to make sure and ensure that the, men, that the people of Jefferson Parish are safe and secure. Regrets? Not many. Hardly none at all, but there are a couple. I was not able to bring David Michelle home safely. I was not able to bring Stephen Arnold home state safely, and I was not able to bring Jerome Fountain home safely. And Stephen and Jerome still fight for their life each and every day, and I beg of everyone not to forget them. So one might ask, what now? I'm pleased to announce that on August the 31st, Chief Deputy Joe Lapinto will be sworn in as the next sheriff of Jefferson Parish. By state statute, there's a succession plan, and Joe will lead this organization, and I have the full faith and confidence uh, that he has the ability and the capabilities to do so. Because there's one thing about a leader. A leader has a succession plan. 
a leader develops folks that can carry the torch because we are only fiduciaries in that regard and we hold the public's trust in the palm of our hands and we have to manage and massage it carefully and we have to think about all of the hard work that we put in to be in that fiduciary in crafting and molding this organization that we all know as the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office. I reached out to Joe uh, over a year ago, actually several years ago, and began talking with him about him coming back to the Sheriff's Office after having spent eight years here uh, in a beautiful career. And actually, ironically, Joe came to my office one day and I didn't even know him. And he asked me, what next do you think for me? Uh, when I was the chief deputy, I, I believe, at the time. Uh, he was in law school. I said, Joe, you have to go. You have to go see what, what is out there and what your future holds as a lawyer and what you're training yourself to be. Uh, because in here, at this point in time, there's not the capability of upward mobility for you uh, in that respect. And you've got so much to offer and so much to learn. So much like, I hope, in my good friend Harry Lee, who helped cultivate me for this position, that I've helped cultivate Joe for this position. Because that what is what good leaders uh, do. I beg of the citizens of Jefferson Parish to give Joe every deference that they gave me and to trust in my judgment that he would be the man who would lead us into the future. So one might also ask, as for me, what is my future and why are we here today in July when I have uh, time in my term. One, good leaders know when it's time to leave. Good leaders evaluate opportunity. And as I've talked about all of the opportunities that I've had in my life, beginning my career in 1977 with the Orleans Parish Criminal Sheriff's Office, and then the opportunity that Harry Lee gave me that was just, could never have imagined what it would lead to. As it turns out, my next opportunity is that I have been offered to take over for Garland Robinette as the radio talk show host for WWL Radio, and that's what I will be doing. When I first got the call, I was completely intrigued by this opportunity. I will be stepping over the line, as we refer on our side, <laughs> to your side as the dark side. <laughs> and I do so without any regret at all either, and without any hesitation. I think you will all agree that I've treated you, although sometimes a little bombastically, <laughs> it has always been with respect and transparency and follow-up, uh, understanding the necessary role that you play day in and day out in our communities and our societies across this country. What I'm most intrigued about is that I will be able to lead in a different way. I will be able to be part of stimulating and influencing the development of public opinion in so many different ways and in so much broader landscape than I could ever imagine as sheriff. And that's what intrigued me most about this opportunity. Uh, to Chris and Diane from WWL Radio, thank you all so much for your belief in me. And the new opportunity that I uh, have been, I am willing to accept, and I so look forward uh, to this opportunity as well. I 
as I said before, this is a bittersweet death. It's bittersweet. I have developed so many relationships across this parish. To the public, I cannot tell them the, the breadth and depth of my gratitude to them. More about their support of the men and women, because I've often said that I'm not the center of any universe. And I try to instill that in the men and women of this organization. And that in leadership, you must look yourself in the mirror day in and day out critically to understand your weaknesses and your strengths and where you fit in society at large and where you think the next challenge will be for you to influence your community uh, in the best way. That's why I believe that this opportunity is the right one at the right time for me. That I can help and be the cheerleader of this community and the surrounding parishes and to help move us from a third tier to a second tier economic region so that we can try and improve upon ourselves day in and day out and hopefully, like you, help craft successes, help point out deficiencies, but most importantly, help promote the place that we call home. And at the end of the day, what everyone in this society wants is a safe place to live, work, and raise their families. So with that, thank you. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that are raised by the board. Yes? Just out of context, what would you say the mission of the call center is? Is it the call to serve the WWA leadership? I had pretty much had resigned myself to the fact that I was not going to work. Simplistically explained, that's what motivated me to come to work for the city. And then all of a sudden, I get this call out of the blue while uh, standing in line at Chick fil A. <laughs> I walk out into the parking lot as I'm approaching my assistant chair. And this conversation.
Michelle want to know. Uh, September 11 is what will be my first day on air. Uh, so I have just a short period of time between leaving this place and going to this next opportunity. So we, go ahead. Well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> hung out. Um, Are you envious? <laughs> <laughs> um, you're carrying things over to Joe Picker. How do things fall when it comes to that? Obviously, he's been here for a while, but he was new to the department. Before his running the legislature, you're turning things over to him. Does he feel the rest of your term, or is there a special election that will be held? So let, let me just say this. Let me... Yeah, think about the qualities that Joe has. Joe worked here for eight years, worked on the road, worked in narcotics in a detective bureau, you know, left, becomes a lawyer, and then ultimately ends up defending this office and many other sheriff's offices across uh, the state. You know, and with that becomes a breadth and depth of experience that there are very few people uh, that work in this line of work that have that experience set. Uh, comes back now as the, the chief of the patrol division uh, and in a very short period of time will be sheriff. Under the law, the election um, will be called in the spring. Uh, there will be qualifications in January, first primary in March and second primary in April. Um, and that's just the way it is under the election code. Uh, so with that, Joe will serve as the sheriff between uh, August 31st and uh, the election and will serve out the, um, at that point in time, I think certain number of days after, if there's a second primary, after the second primary. Are you endorsing him for the spring already? Uh, I think the fact that I'm standing here and making him uh, the <laughs> sheriff uh, goes without saying. Um, usually you're quicker than that. I know, I know. I have to hear you say it, that it. so. But the fact of the matter is, is that I have, as I said before, the full faith and confidence in, in, in Joe Lapinto. Um, you know, because of all kinds of confidentialities as it relates to this, Joe learned of this Sunday night at dinner with my wife and, uh, and I and Joe and Lauren. Um, and, you know, it was the first time that I was able to tell him uh, most of my staff does not know. Um, you know, so I, when I leave this podium, I walk across the parking lot uh, to talk to my uh, command staff. What about all your other positions? Your place on East Jefferson Hospital Board, your place on all the different law enforcement commissions that you're on, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, that's still yet to be determined. Uh, it's kind of the balls in my court as, as it relates to a number of those issues. and. and this thing has been moving so fast that I, I haven't really come to a, uh, a final uh, decision um, on, on all of that. Um, so stay tuned. Um, but, you know. Is this it? So you're just going to be doing radio? Huh? Is this it? Or are you just going to be doing radio? Or is this anything else in the works? Or? No, I mean, it's, you know, it, it, as, as you all know, you. you you show up for work a certain uh, number of hours a day, but in y'all's business, you're you're always preparing yourself, right? And I, I can't imagine that it's any different than uh, it with talk radio. Uh, in fact, it may be even more difficult because you, you're actually carrying on a conversation for uh, somewhere around two hours and however many minutes in a three-hour show, because I'll be on from 10 to 1, um, you know, and stimulating that conversation. Uh, although I'm uh, sometimes quick on the uptake, but uh, not always. So there are a lot of my skills that I'm going to have to hone uh, in a very short period of time uh, to do what y'all do. What will you miss? Huh? What will you miss? I think I will miss... I, I, I will miss the people here. I mean, I, you know, I've been here... Entire adult life. I think what I'll miss most, though, is reading the dailies of the men and women connecting the dots and making arrests in such a short period of time. 
thinking outside of the box, and their completely pure motivation to solve crime and to make a difference in this community. And then second to that, what I will miss is reading the letters of gratitude that the public writes every day. I get them every day uh, about deputy this, having done that. He really didn't need to do that, but he, he, he went the extra you know, steps and, and, and the extra mile to make a difference, to, to provide a safe and secure and a comfortable environment for me at the point in time when I'm having this crisis. Those letters, they, I can't tell you how they motivate someone, you know, to come to work every day. Uh, just the, the pure appreciation, um, you know, for what this organization does. And this has been teamwork. Uh, no one can do this on their own. I mean, I could stand up here for the next three weeks and, and talk about the people in this organization that have influenced me day in and day out. A lot of people here a lot smarter than me. Actually, I love surrounding myself with people smarter than me because it challenges you. It keeps you on your feet day in and day out. It keeps you on your toes. And, you know, uh, I love to debate things uh, within our own organization. Uh, my staff will tell you, I'll take the opposing point of view and they think that that's the point of view that I've actually embraced, and it's not. Because it's the only way sometimes that I can draw out of them what they're actually thinking. The proclivity is they want to tell, you know, the boss what they think he wants to hear sometimes. I never did like that. Uh, and I never did like the statement that that's the way that we've always done it. And they know better than to ever respond to me in that fashion because that, that'll send, send me into the stratosphere. Uh, and it's been, you know, those times when you read those letters, you're challenging your staff day in and day out. You know, but with that, I'd be less than honest if I didn't tell you I'm a little tired. Um, thinking about 1,500 men and women going home every night, it wears on you. Interestingly, I ran into Warren Riley I guess he's okay with me saying this, uh, at a restaurant Saturday night. And, you know, I said, how you doing? He told me what he was doing in his life and, you know, where he was living and everything else. And, and he looked at me and he says, I got to tell you, he goes, you have survived longer than most as the chief deputy, as the sheriff, you know, being out there all the time in this business is tough. And he goes, I don't know about you, but it wears on you. I said, oh, it, it wears on me, uh, you know, a, a lot uh, in, in many different ways. And it does. I mean, it, it's not easy, you know, when you have so many gun-toting people that are working for you, high volatility, you move from a sedentary state to, you know, everything's crashing around you. And you worry about um, their families, their kids the next funeral that you potentially could be going to. It's not easy, uh, and it really kind of wears on you. Uh, and I hope to be one who brings some calm and balance to the issues that surround law enforcement on radio. I will also um, take the position of making sure that people are being true and honest and are saying things based on empirical data and not on what they feel. Uh, because empirical data, if we stay true to the data, the data has no emotion. Um, the data, you got to deal with it day in and day out, whether you like to or not. Uh, it's one of the things that we've talked a lot in this place. So, um, before my crew floods this room. I have a question for you, Ashley. I'm just going to ask you, as you look back over your 37 year career here at JPSO, is there something that you feel like personally is your greatest accomplishment? Um, I would probably say leadership training. Uh, we redefined the way that we train in this department. Uh, we used to 
talk about leadership once you became a lieutenant or a captain, and now we begin talking about the principles of leadership on day one. Our leadership training, many of you may not realize this, has been adopted by the National Sheriff's Association as a 21st century answer to police training in this country. Our leadership training has been adopted by more than 200 major police departments and sheriff's offices across this country. It's been adopted by entire states in this country as the model for training in law enforcement. When I think about the cultural change that it has brought about within this organization, where we have raised the level of intellect here, um, I would say that that is probably um, the highlight, knowing the cultural shift that we've changed here and that it's been judged by my peers and embraced. And it wasn't just me. There's a whole host of people that have been involved uh, all the way through. And I think, you know, for this organization moving forward, and I know Joe is as committed to it as I have been, uh, is that we will continue to challenge ourselves each and every day. And I, you know, I tell my folks all the time, I don't want you loyal to me. I'm a fiduciary. I want you loyal to the organization. Now, I do realize that I'm the beneficiary of that. I don't want to mislead anybody. But the fact of the matter is, I could walk out of here, get hit by a bus, and some, it has to be carried on. And that's why good leaders know when it's time to leave. You want to leave on top, right? Uh, and you want to have a succession plan that's real, that's meaningful, and that's true to the mission. And I am confident that I have done so. Uh, and I hope and I'm confident that the public will believe in what I'm saying here today as I stand behind this podium. I think this is an important question since I'm hearing from people about this on Twitter already. Does this announcement have anything to do with the indictment of Craig no. that, the, You know, you've read the indictment, you know what it's about, it's a tax issue, it has absolutely nothing to do. This has been going on for a period of time. Uh, I make this decision at this point in time in announcing it. I could have announced it, you know, uh, further back, uh, but I, I chose not to. I chose to do it at this time um, because I, I had to get a lot of my personal stuff in, in, in line and ready for this and sharing it with my family and going back and forth and evaluating this position uh, and, and the whole nine yards. I mean, uh, it's a coincidence at best, and that's all it is. And I doubt very seriously that I'd be taking a job in the media if it was in fact connected to that. So once again, if you look at staring the obvious in the face and maybe looking at, at some empirical data, we may think otherwise, right? Did WWL hire somebody with a sensor button uh, for you? <laughs> Ironically, in a conversation yesterday, they said that I had to go through some FCC. <laughs> Not sure why. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it.